Hi everyone, Young John here. Now I've just finished putting together this week's time travel to the year 1945 and as a special subject the VE Day celebrations. However, it's turned out to be rather special and a fairly uh, long programme, in fact well over an hour, and it may be too much for you to watch in one go. So I've decided to split it into two parts. Part one will be our normal time travel to the year 1945 and I'll talk about the events of the year, some of the uh, films that came out and the music. Part two will be our topic of the week which is the VE Day celebrations and also of course the 75th anniversary uh, this week. What you're watching now is the second part of the programme. So part two, VE Day and the celebrations. We have seen how the final months of the war in Europe led to the German surrender, so now we will focus on the road to VE Day. So sit back and join me as we step back in time and look at the events leading up to VE Day and the celebrations that followed. Now, as far back as the end of 1942, the fate of the Nazi regime was obvious to most people. However, their propaganda machine decided to call for total war, and that would result in Germany carrying on with the war, despite the leaders knowing that all was lost. This message was delivered by German propaganda minister Joseph Goebbels at the Berlin Sportsplast to a carefully selected audience on the 18th of February 1943, when he called for total war and claimed the tide of World War II was turning. Sondern vielmehr die, die ihr rechtzeitig, wenn nötig, unter vollkommener und radikalster Ausschaltung des Judentums entgegenzutreten. Extermination of the Jews. He almost let the truth slip out. Goebbels in the Sports Palace. He wanted public approval for a total war on the home front as well. The pinnacle of his speeches, painstakingly rehearsed. How to bring a people to the point of madness. That night, Goebbels said, if I had ordered them to jump from the roof of a tall building, they'd have done it. This meant that the struggle continued for two more years. Most of the long established international rules were abandoned as well. World War II proved to be the deadliest international conflict in history, taking the lives of 60 to 80 million people. And these included 6 million Jews who died at the hands of the Nazis during the Holocaust. Civilians made up an estimated 50 to 55 million deaths from the war, while military deaths comprised 21 to 25 million of those lost. But millions more were injured and still more lost homes and property. On the 23rd of March 1945, Allied forces crossed the River Rhine. With Berlin surrounded, on the 30th of April 1945, Adolf Hitler committed suicide. 
On the 7th of May 1945, Germany signed an unconditional surrender at Allied headquarters in Reims, France, to take effect the following day. Assembled here today to accept the surrender terms uh, which have been made with a delegation from the German army. I will now read out the terms of that instrument of surrender. The German command agrees to the surrender of all, all German armed forces in Holland, in northwest Germany, including the Frisian Islands and Heligoland and all other islands, in Schleswig Holstein and in Denmark, to the Commander in Chief, 21st Army Group. This to include all naval ships in these areas. These forces to lay down their arms and to surrender unconditionally. All hostilities on land, on sea, or in the air by German forces in the above areas to cease at 0800 hours British double summer time on Saturday the 5th of May 1945. news of the German surrender was not surprising. It had been anticipated for some time and people across Britain were on standby to celebrate the end of the war. The announcement that the war had ended in Europe was broadcast to the British people over the radio late in the day on the 7th of May. The BBC interrupted scheduled programming with a news flash announcing that Victory in Europe Day would be a national holiday. This is the BBC Home Service. We're interrupting programmes to make the following announcement. It is understood that in accordance with arrangements between the three great powers, an official announcement will be broadcast by the Prime Minister at three o'clock tomorrow. In view of this fact, tomorrow, Tuesday, will be treated as Victory in Europe Day. After nearly six long years, the war in Europe is finally over. May 8th, 1945 is declared Victory in Europe Day. Spontaneous celebrations erupt throughout the world. French soldiers pick me up, hoist me on their shoulders, and carry me down the Champs Elysees shouting, Vive la France! Vive l'Amérique! After four years of service in five countries, U.S. Army nurse June Wandry is on furlough in Paris on VE Day. We are in the heart of Paris. The crowd is nearly hysterical. Everyone is out on the streets, planes zooming overhead in huge formations. All the important brass are there, the gall, and here I am. A very great crowd is collected already. Thousands upon thousands of people gathered to share this historic day with the King and Queen. Listen to the crowd. The rejoicing is sobered and subdued by a supreme consciousness of the terrible price we have paid to rid the world of Hitler and his evil band. Let us not forget, my fellow American, our victory is but half won. The West is free, but the East is still in bondage to the treacherous tyranny of the Japanese. From the last Japanese division has surrendered unconditionally. Then only will our fighting job be done. However, many people in Britain 
didn't wait for the official day of celebration and began the festivities as soon as they heard the news on the 7th of May. After years of wartime restrictions and dangers, from food and cloth rationing to blackouts and bombing raids, it was understandable how eager they were to finally be able to let loose and enjoy themselves. Colour bunting and flags soon lined the streets and villages and cities of Britain. On the eve of VE Day, bonfires were lit, people danced and the pubs were full of revellers. Now, you remember the video I've just shown you? Remember the two girls that were in it? Well, think about them carefully, because they didn't just pose with these two soldiers, they also posed with two sailors. And here's a photograph that was taken of them. And it became world famous. This is an iconic photograph, one that has been used across the world to highlight the celebrations on VE Day the end of the Second World War in Europe. But there are always one big question surrounding this particular picture. Who were the two women smiling for the camera in Trafalgar Square Fountain on the 8th of May? Determined to find out the answer, a major newspaper put out an appeal for help. 24 hours, 24 hours later, they were contacted by a relative and it turns out their names were Kathia Coviello and Joyce Dingley. The two women were lifelong friends and went on to marry two Canadian servicemen and actually moved to Canada at the end of the war. A national holiday was declared in Britain for the 8th of May 1945. In the morning, Churchill had gained assurances from the Ministry of Food there was enough beer supplies in the capital, and the Board of Trade announced that people could purchase red, white and blue bunting without using ration coupons. There were even commemorative items hastily produced in time for the celebrations, and these included VE Day mugs. Some restaurants had special victory menus as well. Now, Winston Churchill was the man of the hour on VE Day. Britain's Prime Minister had been a major driving force behind the Allied victory over Nazi Germany. And now that peace had come, the British people were keen to celebrate with him. At 3pm on VE Day, Churchill made a national radio broadcast. In it he announced the welcome news that the war in Europe had ended. Yesterday morning at 2.41 a.m. at General Eisenhower's headquarters, General Jodl, the representative of the German High Command and of Grand Admiral Dönitz, the designated head of the German state, signed the act of unconditional surrender of all German land, sea, and air forces in Europe to the Allied Expeditionary Forces and simultaneously to the Soviet High Command. Uh, hostilities will end officially at one minute after midnight tonight, Tuesday the 8th of May. We may allow ourselves a brief period of rejoicing Today is Victory in Europe Day. Tomorrow will also be Victory in Europe Day. But let us not forget for a moment the toils and efforts that lie ahead. Japan, with all her treachery and greed, remains unsubdued. The injuries she has inflicted upon Great Britain, the United States and other countries, and her detestable cruelties call for justice and retribution. We must now devote all our strength and resources to the completion of our tasks, both at home and abroad. Advance Britannia. Long live the cause of freedom. God save the King. 
In fact, three days were announced by the government. Firstly, VE Day itself would extend between the 8th of May and the 9th of May and organised events that needed more time, there would be a Thanksgiving Day, which would be May the 14th, 1945. The royal family also played a central role in London's victory celebrations. Huge numbers of people surged down the Mall to Buckingham Palace, where King George VI, Queen Elizabeth and their daughters, Princess Elizabeth, and Princess Margaret soon appeared on the balcony to wave to the cheering crowds. In fact, the King and Queen made eight appearances on the balcony that day and at one point were joined by Winston Churchill. Now from Berlin to London, from the vanquished to the victor. Outside Buckingham Palace, crowds cheer themselves hoarse. Seven times during VE Day, the British royal family appeared on the balcony. And the people below were the people of Britain, a people who for five and a half long years had suffered under the bombs and guns of Nazi Germany. A man we seem to have seen before somewhere looks down from a balcony in Whitehall. Back to Buckingham Palace where this time Churchill was to stand on the famous balcony with the royal family to share with them a nation's joy. While the King and Queen were waving to the crowds for the last time that evening, their daughters were secretly mingling with the jubilant crowds below. The future monarch, Princess Elizabeth, and her sister Margaret had been allowed to leave the palace and take part in the celebrations. Now, we don't actually have any film, of course, of that, uh, but since then, a movie has come out called A Royal Night Out, starring Sarah Garden as uh, uh, Princess Elizabeth. Now, looking at um, their costumes, of course, they were rather grand. Um, and here's some of the fashions of the day, the sort of things that people would have been wearing then. 
And I don't suppose many young people realise, although I'm sure all of you do, that many of these were actually handmade, made in the home by people themselves. Because in those days, we couldn't afford to buy many proper clothes. Uh, we'd buy patterns and the materials and make them ourselves using our Singer uh, sewing machine and the patterns that we bought. So that's just to give an idea of some of the fashions that were around um, during 1945. So, let's relive these days as if we were still there. The 8th of May, 1945, Victory in Europe Day, or VE Day, was one that will remain in memory of all those who witnessed it. It meant an end to nearly six years of war that had cost the lives of millions, destroyed homes and families and cities, and brought huge suffering and privation to the populations of entire countries. It's understandable then that the VE Day celebrations continued well into the night. The largest crowd in Britain were in the capital, but people all around the country took part in parties, singing and dancing. Many bonfires and fireworks were lit to mark the occasion. Much of the celebrations included the music and songs that we came to love during the war years. And there's no better example than one of our national treasures, Vera Lynn. Many of her hits have come to symbolise our emotions, whether we were in far-flung locations fighting the enemy or in our own bombed out and damaged homes in cities. <laughs> There'll be bluebirds over the white cliffs of Dover tomorrow. Just you wait and see. There'll be Tomorrow, when the world is free. The shepherd will tend his sheep, the valley will bloom again, and Jimmy will go to sleep. There'll be bluebirds over the white cliffs of Dover tomorrow. Just you wait and see. The shepherd will tend his sheep. The valley will bloom again And Jimmy will go to sleep In his own little room again There'll be bluebirds over The white cliffs of dough Tomorrow, just you wait and see. We'll meet again. Don't know where, don't know when, but I know we'll meet again 
some sunny day Keep smiling through Just like you always do Till the blue skies drive the dark clouds far away So will you please say hello to the folks that I know Tell them I won't be long They'll be happy to know that as you saw me go I was singing this song We meet again Don't know where Don't know when But I know we'll meet again Some sunny day As well as a radio and uh, uh, record hits, Vera also made much of her time and commitment in travelling through the war zones, entertaining the troops. We meet again, don't know where, don't know where. Today, her songs command hit status. For example, watch this 2015 interview when We'll Meet Again was a number one for the second time. And by the way, it's back there again this year, which also happens to be Vera's 103rd year. When you found out yes. you were number one, it was a shock. I thought, oh, what, 70 years ago, <laughs> the same song was number one. 
and little did I think that um, I would even still be around let alone have a number one hit. But naturally we picked the songs that I liked and everybody liked and, and, and was suited the time. Do you know how many songs you've recorded? Not offhand, no, but I've got a, a book upstairs with all the titles in. I've got pages of them because there's so many uh, songs that I recorded that really weren't popular. So, of course, people never heard them very much. So, um, so it's dozens and dozens of songs you recorded. Oh, yes, there's loads of songs that have never been published, you know, or, or got made popular. And it's not just Vera that we listen to. Other acts are capturing our ears with the sounds of our World War II hits. Take this one at a spectacular and very special VE performance on the 70th anniversary event in the centre of London. Germany may have had the superior hardware, but the Allies jukebox was miles better. Hit it, Steve! Even Britain's Got Talent has showcased nostalgic numbers that evoke the wartime spirit. So now I'd like to play you a clip from the TV programme starring the D-Day Darlings. Hello girls. Hi. Hi. We're the D-Day Darlings. OK. And you all have normal jobs, I take it? Yes. Um, I'm a wedding executive at a hotel. I do some waitressing um, and work in a department store. Why have you decided to come on the show? Well, we're keeping the wartime spirit alive and we're trying to put it into the new generation. That's our mission, that's what we do. Okay. So the kind of gigs that you've done in the past, where do you do them? We've performed at British Legion events, a Festival of Remembrance, but we also perform for veterans' birthday parties who were 90 that just want us yeah. to come and have a sing along with them. Fantastic. <laughs> Best of luck. Thank you so Thank much. You. Yeah. 
Enough of the entertainment. Let's now step back in time and relive these days as if we were still there. After 75 years, it's difficult to visualise the emotions of the day, but using technology, we can create at least an image of the events played out in front of our eyes. Here, an off-duty policeman captures stunning Kodachrome cine film of the celebrations in Gateshead, flags and bunting strung across the terraces, jubilant women and children and a few men gathered for street parties, waving defiant teapots after years of wartime blackouts, bombs and ration cards. This is rare colour footage of VE Day celebrations and it was filmed in West Gateshead down terrace streets called Fleming Street and Askew Road, both of which have since been demolished. And as we're um, speaking from Emsworth, I thought as a little bonus, I'd give you some photographs taken on VE Day of street parties in South Street, Emsworth. In fact, some of my neighbours are actually uh, in these photographs, but uh, 75 years ago, they've got a little bit older now. We are now moving on to Thanksgiving Day, with crowds cheering on a grand civic and military procession through Saltwell Park. As you can see, every group 
from scouts to Dad's army, are joining the other forces to celebrate victory in Europe. I'm afraid our time is up. In fact, the show has been a bit longer than usual, so hopefully you haven't fallen to sleep. Next week we'll get back to normal. However, if you're game for more, and if YouTube doesn't block me, I thought I'd share, as an encore, a couple of lighter videos from a TV series called Horrible History, and these honour the wartime era with a comical slant. So, before they begin, I'd like to wish you all a very happy VE Day. We're girlies from the 30s, wash the dishes, scrub the floor. When all of a sudden, our hubbies went to war. Did you think we'd shrink in England's needy hour? You yeah, what? Of course not. Taking cold, breaking Air Force myths. Radar man and lorry driving, weather guessing, foreign spying. I do all these. I took the role of Langer while our men fight far away. Farming on the home front, helping save the day. Tending crops and animals, manual labor hurts. In the field, my uniform, this scratchy time show. For the German chaps in World War II In hurricanes and spitfires Performed feats of daring do The finest British pilots That the world could hope to have Binky, Stinky, Squiffy, Frantisek And Stanislav Hold fire is that some foreign chaps Risking their necks That's right, some of the bravest men Were Polish and Czech But let me tell of my ordeal Lost both legs in an accident These ones are not real, not real. I left the Air Force after that Flying was a hobby But when war broke in 39 Came back Just like Robbie Shot down 22 of them Led the air attack Till finally the Luftwaffe Lucky to survive five missions Not that I'm complaining But I've had just ten hours training Epic dogfights in the sky Outnumbered, that's why We're now known by you As the few Few? He missed me The Battle of Britain was our pilot's finest hour Although it seemed at first the Germans were the stronger power oh, so strong. We mustered all our courage in summer 1940 Scrambled Air Force squadrons to fly sortie after sortie. Saw Nazi invasion of just as.
as him and sure heard our bravery meant Hitler wouldn't be back for good. No, no. We beat the Fuhrer without us frequent flyers. In the field of human conflict, was so much owed by so many to so few. Horrid.